Hey guys, this is Jesse from Ready, and we are getting ready to go to Williston, North Dakota. We're going to be doing a full rebuild on a 1590 box drill, as well as an IS install on another 1895. So we got a couple things we're going to be doing there. It's going to be four of us. We're getting all ready to go here. We're a few minutes from rolling. But we got the tonner. We got quite a load with our tools and parts and everything. Yeah, lock her up. Hope we got everything. Time to get in the truck, here we go. It's locked. Wrecked it. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. to our first destination we're going to be installing the wireless blockage system on a 1895 drill just the seed rows so we're thinking it'll be about two and a half hours with the four of us if all things go well and we'll be to the hotel tonight and on to the box drill tomorrow Well, we made it. Looks like they got everything set up ready for us. The customer farmer is actually on vacation in Montana. So we're gonna come here and put wireless blockage on all the seed rows up there. There's six towers, 52 runs. It's got his tractor all set up so we can get the iPad all configured and make sure that's all working. Should go pretty quick here. We'll get that done and be on to the next thing. It's pretty exciting when you can see a lot of the parts that customers already installed. And here you can see we've got the stainless steel tubes, full stainless rebuild, the front tank, and then even the ready hydraulic drive conversion. It's always rewarding to see when it's installed and it's working. It's already a couple years since a lot of this was put on and it's still looking really nice and functioning really well. out here right in the middle of our install wireless blockage and here you can see we've already got most of the sensors across all the seed rows this is a 52 row 1895 for the seed another 26 here so 78 row total but we're just doing the seed on this one uh, the first ECU is up and mounted here and we're starting to run the wire harness and the rest of the ECUs so we're, we're making good progress how's it going Garrett good Making Good headway. Garrett's the ECU install master. Go on, Ethan. If I'm confused by instructions, that means we should probably fix them. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but one thing we're gonna be doing is updating few things here just based on some part numbers that have changed there's a few ways you can do this it's just we need to simplify it so it's not such a mind twister but quick update here we are currently running the wire harnesses through here all the sensors are hooked up ECs are hooked up so we're making really good progress We are getting really close to finishing up here. We're just doing some last minute zip tying, retentioning of the, the wires. Isaac over here is setting up the iPad. How's it going, Isaac? Hey, so what he's doing is assigning each ECU on the iPad here. It's a little hard to see, but. So we'll have six towers on in this specific configuration. And when you finished running all your retentions, your zip ties and stuff that there's enough loose slack here. We're gonna run some big zip ties around here. Make sure that it's not gonna pinch or get caught by stocks. And then you follow hydraulic hoses here or anything along the frame that is gonna keep it nice and clean and up away from 
possible snags. Hinge points are another big issue. You never want to just run one right across here. Definitely a pinch point, especially through here. So we just followed the hydraulic hoses that are already there right through here. Minimize any of that. And you'll see up here is where I'm kind of bringing everything together so that all the extra wire has one focal point, one spot that it is all wrapped together. So hopefully it's a it's a really clean routing. So we just have the tractor auxiliary on. You can see here everything's functioning correctly when it blinking red it's a really good sign one thing that we're learning though is always want to make sure your ipad is up to date with the latest software firmware and that's just from ipad end and then the other is making sure that the recon app is downloaded because when we get here farmers not here they need a password whatever we usually don't have that because it's tied to their account and it makes it all set up right away Hey guys, we're back here. We just completed the Intelligent Ag wireless blockage install from Red E. So this thing is ready to go. Looks really nice. There's some more upgrades that this guy's gonna wanna do here as he gets ready for spring seeding next spring. But uh, overall, this thing's gonna be ready to go. He's got it all hooked up in the iPad. We tested it out. What do you guys think? Went pretty well. Yeah, we had mild weather, low 80s, so we're pretty happy about that. Yeah, we're ready to hit the road, get on to our next job site. guys, it's day two of our adventure out here in Williston, North Dakota. We had a good day one putting in an intelligent ag system. And now we are heading to the truck here. We're gonna be starting our rebuild of a John Deere 1590 box drill 20 foot 32 row. So it's gonna be a good day. Really nice weather out low 80s and here we go. Here it is, the 1590 box drill. We're just pulling up here. Uh, this thing was kept inside, so it's actually in pretty nice shape. It's just wore out. We're going to be doing a complete overhaul on these these row units here. He's got a nice setup. Give us a little more room going on this incline over here. So pretty excited about that. We're making really good progress here. Ethan's running down the front rank here, getting the closing wheels off. Uh, Isaac and Garrett are back here getting the discs and the other closing wheels and related off. So we're already getting it stripped down really quickly. Isaac, you're trying the new uh off-road creeper, huh? Oh yeah, she works good. Yeah, look at that. We're always looking for better ways to do things. The other thing that was really nice is farmer pulled the box drill up on a, on a ridge here, which gives us a little extra room under here. Inches make all the difference. We are clipping along here, it's about 11 a.m. and we've got most of the road torn apart here. These are all uh, bushings blown out, cleaned out. I just took off the wear ring, the large hub wear ring in here, cleaned most of it out. It's got a couple of these drill out bushing kits. And I'm gonna show you why we don't recommend these. Uh, you'll see this one was drilled out and it's loose in here. So you can actually see it's just spinning. And not only that, but the bolts get stuck inside the bushing. And a lot of times you have to cut, cut the bolt off just to get it out of here, which is just, it's problematic. Uh, that's why we recommend the, the boot stabilizer that comes in here and locks that bolt up in here. Really the best fix out there. One time purchase, install, and that's all you'll ever need to do. going Isaac? Pretty good. So Isaac's taking apart all the depth adjuster pivots, spindles, shafts, seals, getting those all out on the front right now. He already did the rear. Ethan is finishing up cleaning out the front closing and press wheel pivots. How's it going Ethan? Not too bad. 
what we found is the, the back rank here was had a lot of grease in it. Everything pushed out real nice. This front rank though, it's a lot more caked in, probably because it was harder grease so the, the farmer didn't get up here as often and so dirt got in there and as you can see, a lot of caked dirt, grease, whatever you call it. So that's what he's trying to push through here and get done. One thing, one little trick here is these caps off the brake cleaner cans. This one here, they fit perfectly in the cavity and when you push it through, as long as it's not really kicked up in there, it will push 95% of the material right on out. Just like that, little tricks of the trade, right Ethan? Oh yeah. One of the challenges we typically run into is row units, especially in the middle, that are right next to each other. They switch from left hand to right hand. So that gets to be quite a challenge to try to drive those pins out. Uh, another one is just access and stuff like that. We, we've used different tools and we try different things to get these bushings in and out efficiently and safely. And here's an example just using a simple strap. So I can drive the bushing in with a hammer. So I'm going to shove these up, run the strap up and around. One thing I would like to do is drive the old bushing out with the new. Second day here, we're getting all the hubs on. Isaac's putting the main part of the hub. We've got these sub assembled up on the bench, and then he's putting these inside, making sure there's grease in there. And then the spindle nut goes on, torqued appropriately. And then I'm coming along here and putting these medium triple up seals on in preparation of the depth shaft that will slide in here. We are booking along here. Uh, it's about noon, second day, and we are putting all the boot stabilizers on. Here we've already got discs, press wheel arms, press wheel springs, all that stuff, so this front rank is coming along really good. Let's check in what, what Garrett's doing. How's it going, Garrett? Good. Discs going on. You look too comfortable. Yeah, I'd like to take a nap down here. Hey guys, so we're just finishing up here. We've got everything done on the drill and the guys are picking up the remaining tools, loading up the trailer, and we've got everything completed on the, this 1590 box drill, 32 row. You'll see it was a very thorough rebuild and we're gonna, he's gonna be trying uh, three different pro stitch closing wheels. So he's pretty excited to see how those do. Other than that, a very thorough rebuild. You'll see all new discs, all pivots, boots, tabs, you name it, it's, it's been replaced. So thanks for watching guys. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and see you next time. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,